My usual method of uh, creating YouTube videos is to come up with a topic, do a little bit of research, gather some photos and illustrations and whatever, and then produce the video and upload it to YouTube. But today's a little different. I was reading uh, Breitbart, as I often do in the morning, and I came across an article that referenced a piece in The Atlantic by Jamel Hill. And in this uh, piece, she apparently raised a question of if Americans don't value black lives, why should black athletes bother to entertain them? My first reaction was, what's she on? But my second was, you know, fine, <laughs> let's, let's, let's agree with her. And let's, you know, support the proposition that African-American athletes should just stop playing professional sports until we solve all the social justice issues in this country. This, this is the article in question you can see up on the screen here. And uh, this, is, this is a quote. Why should a country that doesn't value black lives get to be entertained by black athletes? Now, I, I went down and I saw that you know, there was a link to the Atlantic. And I said, well, I went to the Atlantic. And that's not exactly what she said in the piece. Now, at that point, I was wondering why it was a quote, because I went through here and I actually couldn't find a quote. When she gets to the very end of the article, you can see that she says, at the very least, this week's historic disruption shows that black players should leverage their talent to promote change at every possible opportunity. They've tried to sweet talk America into caring about racial injustice. But the litany continues. After George Floyd and Jacob Blake was only a matter of time, after Blake, someone else is likely to come next. When a country doesn't respect black lives, it can expect black athletes to hold back their anger. It can't expect. That's, well, that's not exactly what she said. Where'd they get that? And then, but then reading down further in uh, the Breitbart piece, uh, they didn't manufacture the quote. It actually comes from a tweet. Uh, this is a Jamel Hill, you know, blue check uh, tweet here. Why should a country that doesn't value black lives get to be entertained by black athletes? My column for the Atlantic on the NBA work stoppage that brought sports to a halt. Now, in her article on the Atlantic, basically what Hill is arguing is that the black players have all this leverage, that there's a whole economy that, that's sort of wrapped around professional sports, and that the loss of that economy would hurt TV networks, it would hurt cities themselves. And I think that that's a good point that she's making. The problem is, right now, I think that leverage is a lot lower than it's been in the past. As a matter of fact, you could say it's going down. I mean, if you look at sports in general, professional sports, you know, they were shut down by COVID-19. Now, a lot of people missed professional sports. I missed mostly college sports, March Madness. But people did survive without it. And I know a lot of people, and I'm one of them, who basically broke the habit of watching sports. And I say it's a habit because that's how I grew up. My, my, my grandparents watched sports. My parents watched sports. My neighbors watched sports. I can remember as a kid, you know, walking around in Philadelphia at night. People didn't have central air then. The windows were open. The doors were open. And if the Phillies were playing, you'd hear it on the TV or the radio. A lot of kids, you know, we carry our little NFL channel on, on cable. But it just wasn't the same. I knew who won those playoff games. And they kept showing the same ones over and over again. So I just stopped watching. I broke the habit. Now, on top of COVID came all the racial unrest, racially rooted unrest in the country. And the response of professional athletes, especially professional black athletes, but not exclusively, by making statements you know, not wanting to play, not wanting to do this or that, and putting Black Lives Matter you know, on the court, allowing people to wear slogans on their jerseys, but only certain slogans. I mean, I actually saw somebody go in and try to go to the NBA site and put like free Hong Kong on a jersey. No go. You can't do that. But you can put Black Lives Matter or something, the name of somebody who's been killed by a cop that's possible. But if you have your own agenda, forget it. You can't do it. So it really looked bad. And then you have the problem with the NBA and China that goes back even before all these problems. And I think there's a, there's a lot of antipathy, especially toward the NBA. You could argue toward professional sports in general. And on top of the COVID-19 came this antipathy, and we can see it playing out in 
the ratings of television. They're down. You know, in, in some cases, the NBA ratings are down 30, 40, even 50 percent over games in previous seasons. And we don't know what's going to happen with the NFL when they pick up. Are they going to get their audience back? And they've been losing audience, you know, for the years. And on top of that, you've got empty facilities. I mean, they're playing to no crowd. And I think this was epitomized by, you know, the WNBA players walking off the court a while back. Uh, my response to that was, I mentioned it to somebody and they said there is, they didn't even know there was a WNBA. And of course, I actually realized I had never watched a w, WNBA game in my life. And from the little I've read about them, what I knew was they only exist because the NBA subsidizes the teams. I guess if you have an NBA franchise, you have to have a WNBA franchise or something like that. And if it wasn't for all this underwriting going on by the, the male teams, these teams wouldn't even exist. So they have a very low TV ratings. They're playing in an empty facility. So there's no audience there. There's nobody to cheer for them. And they're walking off when they play the national anthem. And, you know, I said, fine. Well, you know, I, I can't say I would boycott them because I've never watched them anyway. But with the support from the NBA, I had the same view toward the NBA. And although I usually don't watch professional basketball during the season, I almost always watch the playoffs, especially when LeBron James is involved. And this year, I haven't watched any of the games. And I haven't watched a single baseball game. I haven't watched a hockey game. I never watched soccer anyway. And I don't think I'm alone. I know there are plenty of people on social media who, who share my opinions who are also taking that same approach toward professional sports. So while I understand her argument that they have leverage, I think right now, at the present moment, they actually have less leverage than they've had in the past. And the other problem is, if you look at how people are responding to these peaceful protests, which are often morphing into and have more recently become almost exclusively riots, uh, the polls are showing that people are getting fed up with this stuff. The polls are showing that people have a much more negative view of Black Lives Matter than they did in the past. And it's starting to dawn on people, you know, what Black Lives Matter means. I mean, just the term itself is fine. Black lives matter, of course. Black lives matter. All lives matter. And I know you can't say that. That's racist. But nevertheless, I've just said it. So call me a racist. I don't care anymore because I get called a racist constantly. But while people feel for black lives, and many people believe, as do I, that there are problems with racial injustice in this country, that doesn't mean they support the organization BLM, Black Lives Matter which is, and you can see this if you look and you do a little research, basically a Marxist government that just doesn't want social justice in this country. They want to destroy the country. They want to destroy the Republican system, small r Republican political system we have. They want to destroy capitalism. This is a revolutionary group. So to see their name on a court, my response is, fine, put it on the court, put it on your jerseys, click. I'm turning you off. And I don't think I'm alone in this. So the idea that they have all this leverage, I think, is really misplaced. But then as I was mulling it all over, it suddenly hit me. You know, Mike, you really agree with Jamel Hill. Black athletes should stop playing. They should just stop entertaining people until we've solved all the social justice problems in the country. Why don't they do that? Why don't they just announce, you know, none of us are going to play anymore. We're just walking out. We won't take our salaries. We're going to stand on principle. And, you know, you'll just have to live without us. I mean, professional sports can muddle on without black athletes. And we'll put up, a, you know, we, the, the black athletes, will get a, you know, a commission together. You can have LeBron James and a couple of people from the NBA, and you can have some black football players and black baseball players and black soccer players. And I guess there's a couple of black hockey players and they can all get on this commission and they can sit around, study what's going on in the country. And they can tell us when all racial, social justice issues have been cleared up when all the police have been disbanded or whatever it is that they want, they can let us know when they're going to come back and play. And until then, the leagues will just have to muddle on using no African-American players. 
I mean, how could that happen? How could we have leagues without black athletes? Has that ever happened in the past? You know, it's not as if in the history of this country, there wasn't a time when we had leagues that didn't have black athletes. By design, it was called segregation. The major leagues locked out black players. Baseball, I'm talking about. The same was true for the NBA. The same was true for professional football. I mean, I can remember watching hockey when there were no black players. It's not that long ago. Uh, soccer, I never watched anyway, so I don't know who was playing soccer. But, you know, just to take uh, baseball or the NBA, there were leagues before there were black players. There was Major League Baseball. It was the national pastime before there were black players playing in Major League Baseball. They had their own leagues. Now, if African-Americans stopped playing professional sports, I think the game would suffer. I think the game has been improved. It's a better, more exciting game. The game's actually not only just been improved, it's been changed by African-American players. In, in, in basketball, to be sure, baseball, maybe to a lesser extent, and football. I mean, they've changed the game for the better. And I would certainly miss seeing them play. I would miss turning on football or baseball and seeing all white players or basketball. I can't imagine what the game would look like. But the leagues could go on. I mean, African-American players in baseball, <laughs> there would be lines forming in the Dominican Republic for people to come here and replace them on those teams. And they're very good players. And some of them are black. Maybe they wouldn't want to play. Only the paler skinned ones would. Who knows? I, I have no idea how it would work out. But there are people who could step up. There are plenty of good white athletes in football and basketball and certainly in hockey who could replace, you know, the African-American players. Would the game suffer? The quality and the nature of the game suffer? To be sure. But that doesn't mean the leagues wouldn't go on. That doesn't mean the leagues wouldn't have fans. Maybe attendance would drop, but attendance is already dropping. So let me know what you think. I mean, do you think we should just, you know, forget our elected officials and just let Le LeBron James and people like him decide which way our, you know, social policy should head in this country? Are you ready to do that? Or do you think this is a daft idea? Do you agree with uh, Jamel Hill or do you disagree with her? Let me know in a comment. And if you, you know, like the video, uh, support the channel, give it a subscription, hit the like button, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until the next time, keep fighting.